Hello and welcome to another gas video where we look at genuinely approachable Sudoku. Sudoku that can be done by anybody. You just need to read the rules if you're new to it, have a little think and plug away because you will find you can do these puzzles and they are very rewarding. That is the whole point of doing puzzles in Sudoku is the dopamine hit and the enjoyment factor that you can get out of these puzzles. So um, gas is a very good on-ramp into, uh, into this stuff, in my opinion. And uh, I'll be doing five puzzles today. That's what I always do from about a month ago that appeared on the Daily Sudoku channel on the Discord server by Philip Newman, Bill Murphy and Clover, unless it's a guest week again, which we had last time. I don't know. Um, we'll have a look and I will read out the blurbs from the Discord channel, the, the write-ups of the puzzles, the introductions which include the rules, and then I'll try and get through them as quickly as I can. Now, do check out our apps because one of them is a gas app and that is really brilliant. It has another 60 puzzles by the authors of the Daily Sudoku channel and it's really entertaining. Um, the reviews have been brilliant and obviously we highly recommend it. Um, about three dollars for 60 puzzles I mean you just can't count that sort of value it's brilliant and there are there are brief hints if you need them as well so um, that's like our other apps which have more extensive hints to enable you to solve the puzzle even if you think you can't um, do give them all a try because they are great and you could also join our patreon and have a go at the Alice in Sudoku land hunt or look at some of the crossword content or any of the other stuff that we put up on there. So those are all things connected with the channel and available. There's merchandise. Look at the links under the video. But the first few links will be to these puzzles. There'll be two links to each puzzle, one in our software via tinyurl and one in fpuzzles in case you can't use the tinyurl. And there will also be times, two different times given. The quicker time earns you two party hats as a reward. Uh, the slower time earns you one. But even if you can't get that time and you do finish the puzzle, you do get a dinosaur. And uh, the gas guys will tell us what the dinosaurs are for each puzzle. So I will go back to this first puzzle called, what's it called? Waking Up is Hard to Do by Philip Newman who said, note, this intro is a continuation of yesterday's gap intro, which I'm not going to delve into. He says it, it probably won't make much sense without reading that first. It probably won't make much sense after reading that first either. After reading that first either, I should have stressed there. Oh, well, I don't know. Oh, so here is the intro. Sorry, I, I have been provided with the intro from the gap link, which says... Howdy folks, today is a perfectly ordinary Groundhog Day here at Gap HQ. The temperature is a crisp 26 degrees Celsius with prevailing winds out of the southwest and it's looking like the blizzard on the horizon is going to miss us entirely. Of course, if Punxsutawney Philip... Wait, is that Punxsutawney Philip over there playing Mozart's Piano Sonata 16? When did he learn to play the piano? And carving ice sculptures of sloths with his tail? I could have sworn he was scared of his own shadow, but here he is confidently entertaining a foreign channel. No, no way. He made a pencil puzzle too. Where did he find the time to do all this? So that clearly refers, well, first of all, to the film Groundhog Day, which if you haven't seen it, do because it is culturally essential is how I would describe it and because February the 2nd is my daughter's birthday um, but also because uh, it's referring to the fact that Phil Philip Newman must have done um, a gap puzzle the day before so today he then continues this with the clock on the bedside table flips over to six o'clock and the alarm goes off babe I got you babe I got you, babe. Punks a tawny Philip sighs and begins mentally preparing to live out yet another version of this same day. Before he even has a chance to start going through his mental list of pencil puzzle genres, a long neck reaches over him and nudges the alarm clock off the table. Punks a tawny Philip blinks up in surprise at the friendly sauropod who has come to fetch him for today's gas. Philip's eyes slowly open and he glances at the clock on his phone. It's February 7th, 9.59am. As his brain catches up, the completely bizarre and unrealistic dreams he's been having start to fade. 
I mean, really. Waking up at six to post a puzzle had to be a dream. Turning into a groundhog could definitely happen, though. To Philip has really indulged himself there. Today's gas is a no-even-neighbours Sudoku. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. No two cells containing even digits can share an edge. So that two being there, these can't be four, six, or eight. Wow, interesting. Okay. The dinosaur is, of course, the still sleepy sauro Poseidon. And then we will go on to puzzle two eventually, where Clover says, uh, Today's gas is dedicated to my partner of nearly 15 years, World Pion. This intro is a story about love, but it's also a story about a couch. A couple years back, we went shopping for our first nice couch. All I wanted was a couch that I could sit down on and sink deeply into, like the loving embrace of a pool of quicksand. All they wanted was a couch that looked sleek and cute in our beautiful house. In this mid-century modern world, these two goals were, it turns out, at odds. But when we had reached the point of total despair, I spotted the ugliest couch I'd ever seen in my life. This thing was an absolute unit of brown faux leather and costume jewellery trim. As a joke, I dramatically collapsed onto it and sank right in. It was perfect. Dang, I said. Of course, the only comfy couch in Kansas is the one that time travelled here from 1987. I didn't even have to ask my spouse to know that they hated it. There was no chance. We agreed to call it a day, get some dinner and resume the search tomorrow. I rode my bicycle home from the store while World Pion drove our truck. And when I got home an hour later, the truck was parked right next to the house with the tailgate open. That's weird, I said. So I got off my bike, walked up to the house and opened the door. And there was my beautiful, brilliant, hilarious, charming spouse with a smut-eating grin on their face, looking more than a little out of breath, standing next to the ugliest couch in the world. And if that ain't love, I don't know what is. That's nice. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in white circles must appear in one of the two adjacent cells. Okay. The dinosaur is a transrites turiosaurus. Wow. And the next day, we will be going on to three in a row Sudoku by Bill. Sometimes in life, you either have to show up or shut up. Funnily enough, my last performance review did say, you don't know how to shut up. So here I am. And Bill seems to have included a um, notation of donation to the Trevor Project, which uh, provides support to LGBTQ young people. Today's Sudoku is a three-in-a-row Sudoku. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in a row or column cannot have three or more consecutive, odd, or even numbers in a row. Ooh. Cannot have three or more consecutive, odd, or even numbers in a row. So this one can't be odd. Interesting. Not very gas-like is my, my impression of that rule set. The dinosaur is an... LGBTQI Aletopelta. Okay, and the next day from Philip, we have love numbers. Um, I'm not the best with serious and sentimental, says Philip. I'm much more comfortable making terrible jokes. So rather than fumble over words today, I hope you will accept today's puzzle as a love letter to the community. Keep being awesome, keep being supportive, and keep making this a safe place for so many. Well, here, here, and I actually think that you are quite good with serious and sentimental, Philip. And since I love you all, says Philip, I've written a Gas 101 document to help you get through today's slightly tricksy Gamma and Epsilon Sudoku. Feel free to use as much or as little of it as you want to get started. Normal Sudoku rules apply. I won't be using the document. It is available if you go to the Discord server. Gamma and Epsilon. The rules are that digits in cells separated by a white dot must have a difference of five. Digits in cells separated by a black dot must have a ratio of three to one. There's no negative constraint, so adjacent cells separated by no dot may have a difference of five or a ratio of three to one. And the dinosaur is a loving Lohueco Titan, which I cannot pronounce. Um, and then finally for... The puzzle from February the 11th, we will go on to Clover's Semi-Killer. 
Um, before we get started, oh, there were, this was from a month ago, two Sudoku contests for you to enjoy this weekend. Round two of Sudoku Mahabharat and round two of the Sudoku Grand Prix are both open, so probably round three will be coming open this coming weekend, I would think, since I've got a tiny bit ahead of a, a month behind. Usual bonus hat offers apply. Check out event announcements for details. Now, put on your semi-formal attire. Get yourself some semi-sweet chocolate, pull your semi-trailer off to the side of the road and prepare to solve this semi-killer Sudoku. Uh, that may be semi-formal, semi-sweet, semi-trailer and semi-killer if you are American. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits must not repeat in cages. In each cage, the indicated clue is the total of all but one of the digits in the cage. Which digit is left out must be determined by the solver. I mean, again... This seems like a rule set that we could get on a really hard puzzle on any day on the channel. The dinosaurs are semi-seismosaurus, and those are the rule sets we're going to be dealing with. I get the impression that for the last three puzzles, this is going to get very, very difficult. We shall see. Do give them a try on the... I mean, very difficult for gas. Let's not, let's not pretend. Um... I'm going to see how I do now. Let's restart the clock each time. That's my plan. And I will be putting up a timer on the screen so you can see how we're doing. Waking up is hard to do by Philip Newman. Let's get cracking. OK, so there's a one in one of those two cells. Um, there's a five right there. Ooh, and that's a three. These are just hidden singles, which are nice things to deal with every now and then. Got a nine in one of those two. Three, two, one, six is placed up there. Five, actually, I can place that in box two. Now, I have not used this rule yet. No two cells containing even digits can share an edge. That's probably very important. So it's nice to have got through some Sudoku without worrying. Um, there's a four in one of those two. And the rule doesn't decide which. That's surprising. There's... Okay, I need to find the even digits, and then the cells next to them have to be odd. Or maybe I maybe it's worth colouring them. Because they're going to form patterns, aren't they? Look, they're surely going to be in a pattern like this. Once you've got a four there, they must be, mustn't they? I think they are. I think... Yeah, those two. You can't put one there, or there would be. Yes, they are going to form little... In these even-numbered boxes, where there is an even digit in position 2, 4, 6, or 8, all of the even digits, I believe, are going to be in those positions. Is this safe? I think it is. Because how are you going to get three more even digits in there? They've got to be in these cells. They have to be. This That is logical. It's not just... It's not just an assumption that genuinely works. Um, 5, 4, 3, 9, 2, 6, 8, so 7 and 1 are the other odds. Not sure about this one. They might be in those positions there, but they must be here. 2, 4 and 6. That one can't be 4. And down here, again, to get them in, we're going to have to put 2 specifically there and a 4, 8 pair. Um, the Even the other boxes are probably quite constrained but okay I'm going to use that four eight pair to put in nine and three oh uh, don't know where eight goes what have we got down here one three and nine so three there one there nine there that's straightforward enough oh that's look all the even digits are there so this is one and seven in the middle row um Yes, and now the even digits are in the corners of this box. Ah, oh, but I don't know which way round they go. That's not two. That's where one goes. It must be, yes. Um, seven, one, two, five, three, nine. So four, six, and eight. Two of them are even. They have to be kept apart. They can't be six. So they're four and eight. That's a six. That's a two. That's an eight. This is a nine, a five. That's what I mean. Uh, 48513, we've got a 2 in the corner. That is going to have to be where the other even digit goes to fit in. And 
and we're only going to have to disambiguate fours and eights as the last difficult step, I suspect. One, four, six now. That can't be even, so that's going to do it for the fours and eights. Excellent. Four, eight, eight there, if I'm right. Four there. Five and eight in row one. Seven and two in row three. Three, nine, four, but the four can't touch an even, so we put it there. That hasn't fixed this. This is now a two, four pair. I can do them. That does fix this. Um, then we've got eight here and six there, which isn't touching any evens. Good news. And then we've just got finish box nine, five, six. What is this? One, two, three. I think we can write them in by Sudoku without worrying about the rule set anymore. Four, nine, eight. And then finally, four, one, six. So, yeah, spotting that pattern is a useful sort of canter through the puzzle. Let me just highlight where all the twos, fours, sixes, and eights finished up. And I might even learn something from this. So, yeah, certainly in the even numbered boxes, that pattern always prevailed. It's interesting in the corner boxes because, oh, look, the, uh, <laughs> the odd digit that goes in the checkerboard was given everywhere it applied. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Okay. I didn't fully understand that as we were going, but the time's not bad, and I'm happy enough with that. Nice one, Philip. So, Clover next. Either or Sudoku. Digits in white circles must appear in one of the two adjacent cells. Let's get cracking. Okay, so... So this is a group. This is like a quad of two, three, four, six. Eight, which is in one of those, must be in one of those. Uh, I'm going to use that. One, three, four, seven. Now I've got an X wing on threes and fours. So this must be a four, six, three triple. Um, I don't know if this is helpful. I think it might be. One, two, four, eight. So there's a one, four X wing in there. That's a one, four, seven triple. Right, now I can place six and nine. Sorry, that's obvious now. I can probably place one and nine, although I don't actually know which way round they go. Yes, I do. The quads tell me. <laughs> Numpty. This is the right way to approach it. One, two, three, five. So there's a two, three triple. That's a two, three, eight set. I can do seven and five. Uh, one, two is an X wing there. One, two, five, triple, seven, and three. Right, now. Now I have to do some actual work. Five, one, three, six. I've nearly satisfied all the clues at this stage. That can't be a five. So the five goes there. So that's a one, and that's a two. I don't, that's not so obvious this side to me. That can't be a seven, so the seven goes there. Then I can do one and four. This can't be a three, so the three goes there. That's the eight, that's the two. It must be obvious here. Yes, six can't go at the bottom, so six is there. That's a four because of the, the, the clue. And then we get three. So now, what next? Doctor. Um, there's a five in one of those. I don't know. I'm not really approaching this right. Then there's a five in one of these. Oh, that's interesting. Fives go all around the grid a bit like that. Five in one of those. Six in one of these, because of the six we get that, put six in one of these, six in one of these. I don't know. Is this, this isn't probably right as an approach. Oh, that's a naked four. Just seen that. Right. That didn't do anything. There's a one in those cells for two and eight in these. Don't know how they go exactly. That's, no, there is a three there. I was going to say it's a two, three pair. That's not clear. It's not even likely. Um, four in the central row must be there. 
That's doing nothing that wasn't already being done by the clue down here. Oh, one of those is a four, so that's not a four. So I get a four here. Five, six. One must be in those. But there's a one there and a one somewhere there. So that is a one. It's in a sort of overlap of two resulting X-wings. Um, two and eight have to be in this group because they can't be here. Yes. So that's a two, six, eight set. And this is a five, nine pair, which I can write in. So that is two, six, eight, seven, one, four, three, five, nine, seven and six here. That's not five. Six, seven, two, five, one, four. Can't put a three there, so that's the three. That's an eight, nine pair. Okay, this has been a better way of approaching it. Six, seven, that's now a five, nine pair. This is an eight, seven pair, which I know the order of if I just pay attention. Uh, eight, in fact, I can do six, seven there as well. Those don't have a three in. That's now a two. Five, nine pairs done. I still don't know what's in the center of the grid. That's very strange. Um, oh, come on, what next? Six, seven, seven, one, four, nine. There's a five in one of those two. That's not interesting. Four, six, three, nine. There's a five there by Sudoku. That doesn't do much either. There's a nine in one of those two. That's totally useless. Okay, this shouldn't be this difficult. Maybe I'm just ignoring these clues too much. Two can't be there. One can't be there. Three can't be there. And five can't be... Oh, this is quite limiting. So, four can't be there. I've already done that. Uh, eight can't be there. One can't be in those two. And two can't be down that side. I don't know. I don't... This could be wasted time, but I'm going to carry on doing it in case it's not. Three, one, just taking out the impossibles. Two, done the four already. Three out of those, six out of those. Now, what's going on down this column? Nine, five, six and four. Four must be here in the column. Six must be here. Those are both helpful things. Right. So that two by two is unwound. That unwinds this one the other way round. That's an eight. So that's two or eight. Then we've got seven and one. Okay, that's better. Now the four reaches here. Let's go up here. The five is fixed there now. There we go. So that's a six nine pair. I can do one and five in row two. Uh, the five nine here is done. The seven six here is done. This is a six and three. That is a two now, which finally fixes these remaining twos and eights that were outstanding. Um, I don't mean outstanding in a good way. I mean they were just due to be completed. Seven and that's a four. 9 and 8, and then I can finish 6 and 9. This has taken longer than planned. 6 minutes 54. That is a threat to my run of two hat times, and I have not found the first two in this set easy at all, so goodness knows how the harder-feeling three rule sets will go. Wow, we'll see. So, let's get cracking on this one. Um, no three in a rows. So that is even it sees two and well, that is even as well so that's two or four as well um, these are even and those are even so the odd one goes here I see the odd one must go here so it doesn't connect even these are all even oh this is going to be worth coloring this is going to be worth coloring this time I'm doing it a look at the disposition of the evens it's going to be some incredibly regular pattern throughout this puzzle so I'm colouring evens right, so that, um, oh, I don't get, ah, oh, that's a naked two, right, four, two, that's a four, this is six or eight, 
as is the corner up there. That can't, oh, well, it couldn't be even under any circumstances. Oh, that's interesting. These two can't be even. They're odd. Because the rule applies to both sets, weirdly. Um, nine in this column is done, and the others are a one five pair. Oh, this is a weird rule set. That is two or seven. I don't see how the rule set determines which. Oh, three in row two, and then I can do one and nine. Two, one, nine, three. So, what next? There is a three in those cells. Ah, and that places three in row eight for me. That's four or six. I'm going to make it blue. In fact, all of these are blue, aren't they? Oh. No, okay, I made a mistake there when I said there was a three there, because there can't there's not a three there, because there's a three there. I'm a numpty. These ones are all blue. I should have done that before. Oh, come on. So that's six and four in the row. Then we have to place three, five, and nine. I don't know how to do that. Um this has to be odd. This and this have to be odd as well. So all I can do is put in odd digits. I don't want to just colour those because then I'm going to get confused with both sets of colouring. That's a 2-8 pair in the column. Oh, I want to find this easier than I find it. There's a 1 in one of those and a 5 in one of those and a 9 in one of those. And I don't know what I'm doing. The two has to be in the top row. Two, one, nine. Oh my goodness. That is four or five. Is there a way of knowing which parity? Yes, because those two are odd. So that has to be even. Interesting. So that's odd. So these two are even. Yes, okay. That is a bit of a key. Eight there. So there's an eight here. I don't know quite what that does. Let's colour those, because there's going to be a very regular pattern. That's become a 2. This has to be a 6. Now, where's the 4 in the box in one of those two cells? That's quite interesting. It, it, I want to say it can't be there. That's definitely odd. It sees 2, 4, 6, 8, so that can't be odd, and therefore is the 4. Wow. Uh, this is a 2. That's a Four, that's six. This is four, that is eight. Where does six go? It's, I don't know. Four is there in the corner. Six has to break up lots of runs of three odds down here. Now, come on, we must, how have I still got bits of digits to find? Four and eight must be there and there. Eight, Four. That's not what I was trying to do. I didn't want to be in colour anymore. Right, so that's eight. That's six. Two up here is again in the corner. That might be all the even digits done. That place is five and one, nine and seven. So that box is done. Oh no, five and six. Six is definitely an even digit, as needed there. And this is a seven. Six nine two. So that place is seven here, and I've got a three five pair, which will resolve soon. One there gives me a five. What have we got? Seven and three. We can do those. Five nine. That's uh, that was meant to be a five in the middle. Sorry, mistyping. Three nine one. That's a one as well. Five and six here. That sorts out three and five. This has become a one. 3 and 9 here, and then we can go across to 2, 7, and finish with an 8. I haven't coloured all of the even digits, because the others are here. I think that does it for the evens. Yeah, interesting. I mean, I got the hang of that in the end. 
It's int I'm intrigued. Oh no, hang on. I haven't coloured that one because I could see a spell of three whites. I'm intrigued there are patterns to be found which have none of three evens and three odds in a row. I'd say without a computer those are pretty difficult to establish. Right. Love numbers by Philip. Um, so ratios in the black of three and differences of five in the white. Okay, let's get cracking. So, that is 1 or 9. That must be a 2-6 pair. Um, that is not a 3, and that's not a 3, so that's a 2-6 pair. 3 is in this pair, so this group must be made up of 1-3-9 possibilities, because they're all connected, and there must be a 3 in each pair. This is therefore a 2-6 pair. That, ooh, I want to say that one is from 139. This one is not, because the 3 is in that group. Okay, so this is from 139. Wow. Um, this doesn't use 5 or 6 or 2, so it's not 7-2. So it's 8-3. No, it's not that. It must be 9-4. And that makes this a 1. And these other two cells are 7 and 8 in an order that may not be easy to determine. Now, that was a good place to look at the fives. Now, OK, 6 or 2 makes this 7 or 1, makes this 2 or 6, makes this 7 or 1. That's given me a 2-6 pair, which I can't use. Uh, that... Can that be 3, 9? Yes. No, it can't. This can't be a 3 because there is a 3 in one of those. So this is a 2, 6 pair. Now, we can't use 1, 2 or 6 here. Or 3. So it's got to be 4, 9 if you can't use 1, 2 or 3. Right. 2, 6, 1, 4, 9. So the other cells in the row are 3, 5, 7 and 8. 3 is in one of those, so it's not there, it's in one of these. I'm going to pencil mark that. Wow. Um, I don't know. That's not 4, 9, and it also doesn't use a 3, so it's not 3, 8. So it's either 1, 6 or 2, 7. I don't think I know which. Oh, there's two or six there, so that's two or six, and that's one or seven. Uh, we've got a one, three, nine triple there, so that's four. Interesting. So this is nine beneath it. Hmm. Three is in one of those, so that's not three, so that is. Now, this can't use three, two, or six. So it's either four, nine, it can't be one, six, it is four, nine. Two, six, three, five, four, nine. So these are from one, seven, and eight on the edges. <sighs> two, six, five. I don't know about that. This can't be four, nine. It can't use one or three either. So it must use two as the lower number. That's a two, seven. This becomes a six with a one on. That one makes this a nine. That makes this a three, one pair. Oh, there's a three X wing with those things. So this becomes a three. That would have been useful to spot earlier, I would have thought. Eight there makes this seven, makes this one. That fixes this and this. This is going quite well now. That's an 8. We've got 2 and 7 at the top. I can do those. That's become a 6 from the 2 near the top. Um, that now becomes a 6 from the 2 near the bottom. This I don't know, but it's part of a 139 triple. Oh, this is 7 or 8, because those have to be placed in that box. So this is a 459 triple. This is a 136 triple. Oh, look, that can't be 7 anymore. 
Uh, this is known. It's a five. Still can't do those. That's not an eight. Right. This can't be eight three one six. Can't be two seven because of that cell. So it's four nine. Oh, that did nothing. Oh, there's a five there. Maybe it did. Two seven and eight. That can't be a two because it sees a six eight, a two six pair in the row. Doesn't seem to be doing any other good work. Oh, we take one out of those, so it's three and nine. One of those is a three, of course, so that's a one. Right, there we go. Oh, bother. Oh, it's okay, that's a nine. I've just mistyped. Whew, thought I'd had a disaster. We can't have five there. Oh, this is so confusing. Right, two, six, two, six. We must be able to do two over here. There it is. Six, two, nine, three, five. There's a one there in this box. Looking down the front, the first row, five, the first column. I don't know why I'm calling it a row. Uh, that's not an eight, so this is where five goes. Seven and six here. Seven two six one three. Not sure. That's a naked four seven eight pair there. This is a four as well. That's nine. Um, five seven and eight in this row. Which one can't be a five? Don't know. Two five six three seven eight. This is a one four pair in the middle box. That gives me the nine four down here that I needed. That gives me nine four up at the top. Um, that can't be six or three, so that is one. They're done. That is seven or eight, but we know which one. Yes, okay. What have we got here? Three and seven. Five and eight below it. They must be doable. They are four and five down here. Hopefully there's no mistakes in this, because I think we are now poised to finish two and seven there we go six minutes 59 given what Philip said about it I suspect there was a reasonably generous two hat time on that now the semi or semi killer so these cages aren't counting one of the digits that's weird it's weird that there's so few clues and this is gas let's go um, I see so this has got nine eight six in it this 23 so the others in the box are one, three, and five, and neither of them are counting in the 24 cage, which is nine, eight, seven. This has one, two, three in it, with a three in one of those and a one in one of those. Ooh, it's bad pencil marking. This has one, two, three in it. That's much more straightforward. Four and a five, eight pair. Right, that works okay. So we can put the two somewhere in that cage. This is nine, eight, seven again. Okay, you can see how clover has gone about making this rather brilliantly um, gas. 986 in that 23 cage. Three there, that's not a three. Oh, that's not a five anymore, so that's not an eight now. Oh, it is brilliantly put together, it really is. It's this work of art. This has to have one and four in, since it can't have three and two in. So that's a two eight pair. And that's five or six. That's such a weird way of working it out, maybe. Three there. That becomes a one. These are from four, five, six. They must include the four. I can do that now. That looks up to this cage. Still can't do the six, eight pair. That's not seven or eight. So this must be known. That's a six. This has to have one four in as well. So the others... Those must be three and eight, and that's five or seven. I can do this one, two pair. That's not nine or eight now, so this is all done as well. Two, nine, eight, one, three, six, four, five, and seven. This is a naked one. <sighs> now, this seven cage, yes, there we are again. One, two, four. Only one way to fill it. Um, seven nine six in the box this now needs one two four as well we can do the order of those that has been fixed this is a known digit now 
down here. Two, three, four. The two goes there. So the digits adding up to six to fourteen of those. Six there. That's not a seven. Yes, this seven eight pair's done. That's a six. This time we need two and three. So two goes there and three goes there. Five, one, seven, nine, six, four, five, eight, two. That's the top three and bottom three rows all successfully completed. Three, eight, three, four. Let's finish off the I wings in columns four and six. And everything else should follow from that, I would have thought. Nine and five, one, four, seven, six, three, two. So nine, eight, five. There we go. Oh, three minutes, three seconds. Finally, I finished with one quicker than I thought. So that surprised me. That was, Clover found a way to make that rule set work very straightforwardly for us, given the way it was all set up with extremes and the given digits. Very nice. So, as always, five spectacularly good puzzles for our our gas burst today. Um, and, yeah, I hope everybody is in a very nice, welcoming, calm community. Thanks very much for watching us, as always. Um, and very much hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.